you told me there was still a dry cleaning tag on my back of my gown last Sunday when I was preaching. <laughs> Welcome to the house of the Lord, for this is the celebration of St. Michael and All Angels Day. Uh, for over 1,500 years, the Christian church has had this celebration the Sunday after the autumnal equinox, when the dividing line between darkness and light was pretty much 50-50, and it made the early believers think of the spiritual battles between good and evil. So they dedicated it to a Sunday of talking about St. Michael and all angels. Now, St. Michael is one of only two angels mentioned by name in the Bible. The other one's Gabriel, who had that special message of God's grace to announce to a waiting world. He got to tell the wonderful works of salvation to that waiting world. Michael's job is quite a bit different. Michael's known as the archangel, the prince of the angels, the one in charge of the angel armies, the forces that God is constantly using to protect and support and take care of his people. So this day we want to think of God's amazing love and using even one more thing, this gift of, the, of these messenger angels uh, to protect us. So we worship him doing that. As we worship, if you're able, please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil, and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him Bless the Lord, you his angels. You strong warriors who obey his word. Bless the Lord, all his armies. You who minister to him, you who do whatever he is Bless the Lord, everything he has made. In all places where he And I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels who were around the throne and around the living creatures and the elders. Their number was 10,000 times 10,000, and thousands upon thousands. With a loud voice, they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. around those who fear him and he delivers them.
make the Most High your shelter, evil will not overtake you. Disaster will not come near your tent. Yes, he will give a command to his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. So his attendant said to Elisha, Oh no, my lord, what will we do? He answered, Don't be afraid, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Then Elisha prayed and said, O oh Lord, open his eyes so he can see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he saw that the hills were full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. First scripture reading for this day comes to us from the last book of the Bible in Revelation chapter 12. And sometimes in this struggle that God's word lets us know we're always involved in here, we don't always see the big picture. We're the grunts on the ground and in the middle of this, this turmoil and this with the dust of war and the fog of war all around, we don't necessarily see the whole picture of the battle. But here in the book of Revelation, there's God's AWAC plane. And it's got a view of the entire battle completely. And here he gives us this, this incredible encouragement that as he looks out over the whole battlefield, there's absolutely no contest. The devil and all the evil forces are smashed forever and ever. And believers and angels are rejoicing together in this wonderful victory. This great victory that he tells us comes about through the blood of the Lamb and through the word of the testimony. Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 through 12. There was also a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. The dragon fought back along with his angels, but he was not strong enough. There was no longer a place for them in heaven. The great dragon was thrown down, the ancient serpent, the one called the devil and Satan, the one who leads the whole inhabited earth astray. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. I heard a voice, a loud voice in heaven, saying, Now hath come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. Because the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, the one who accuses them before our God day and night, they conquered him because of the blood of the Lamb and because of the word of their testimony. For they did not love their lives in the face of death. For this reason rejoice, you heavens, and those who dwell in them. Woe to the earth and the sea, for the devil has gone down to you. He is full of rage because he knows that, th that his time is short. This is God's word. 
Our psalm for the day is, is a beautiful psalm. It's a beautiful picture of our rest under the shade of this protecting God. Uh, he, he talks about enemies being all around, surrounding us on every side. The bullets are flying through the air, but there we are, safe and protected in this fortress called our God. And his, his protection, his special forces that he uses, his, his angel armies that, that, that cover us and protect us and lead us all the way through until he delivers us from all evil. Psalm 91. <clears throat> for today it helps us understand that revelation text even better in the fall of satan here as jesus disciples come back and they're so excitedly recounting all their triumphs over evil and jesus says yeah those victories are nice but those are little victories those are just the tip of the iceberg seeing that these are just really proclamations about that final victory that is our perfection in heaven forever luke chapter 10 verses 17 through 20 the 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He told them, I was watching Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Look, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will ever harm you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names have been written in heaven. This is the gospel of our Lord. Oh 
and peace are yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Part of God's word for our consideration this day is written for us in the book of the prophet Daniel chapter 10 verses 10 through 14 and the first three verses of chapter 12. Then a hand touched me and pulled me up trembling to my hands and knees. He said to me, Daniel, you are a highly valued man. Understand the words that I'm speaking to you. Stand up where you are, because now I have been sent to you. When he spoke this word to me, I stood up, shaking. He said to me, Do not be afraid, Daniel, because from the first day that you began to commit your heart to gaining understanding and to humbling yourself before your God, your words have been heard, and I have come in response to your words. However, an officer of the kingdom of Persia was standing against me for 21 days, Yet Michael, one of the chief officers, came to help me, for I had been left there against the kings of Persia. I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the latter days, because the vision concerns days still to come. Then, at that time, Michael, the great prince who stands over your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress that has not happened from the first time that there was a nation until that time. At that time, your people will be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book, many who are sleeping in the dusty ground will awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame, to everlasting contempt. Those who have insight will shine like the brightness of the sky, and those who bring many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever and ever. This is the word of our God. Dear friends in Christ, back in 1980, the Swedish Royal Navy received official document from their interior department, the Department of Forestry. It was a letter notifying them that their lumber for shipbuilding was ready. This didn't quite make sense to them, but after some historical research, they were able to clear up this issue and another mystery. Why there are all these giant oak trees on the southern half of this one island, Vosingso, in the middle of the Lake Vetern, when there are no other, no other oaks anywhere around, and maybe it's to, uh, in, in, indigenous sorry, to, the, to this area, anywhere else in that part of the country. But now they had the answer. Because back 150 years before, at the end of the Napoleonic Wars, the Swedish Royal Crown sent out a special delegation to find just the right property where it had the right kind of soil and the right kind of climate to be able to accommodate them in planting these oaks. And they had to be oaks because the Vikings had always said the oaks were the strongest wood for shipbuilding. And unlike apparently the kind of things we call oaks around here, they also had the straightest and truest grain for shipbuilding. So they had found this spot and it was perfect and over the next 10 years they planted over 300,000 oak trees. Then a number of years later in keeping with this same plan they had planted elms and birch and maples in the rows between so that the oaks would keep on pushing all their growth up and not spread out wider. And now a century and a half later that wood was good and ready for them to build their ships with. Unfortunately, they had long before abandoned wood as the material for their hulls, and they were using iron and steel and things like that. But still, you have to hand it for, to these people. This was nice long-term thinking, wasn't it? 
They were thinking long in a time when most people don't. Think of our age. Most people do not think long term. In this fast food, instant tan, rocket mortgage, Amazon Prime next day delivery and promising us next hour so they get their drone system figured out. It's all about right here, right now, what I get, and there doesn't seem to be much thought given to any kind of long-term thinking. Where well, I used to be ecstatic when I'd hear a little and my internet would be connected by dial-up. It only took three or four minutes. Now, if my computer lags for a microsecond. I've already frustratedly and, and impatiently pushed keys that I'm going to have to undo and redo later on because it's already doing something else. And we find ourselves in this day and age where everything is right now and it does have its effect on us. It turns us more into a consumer oriented society, a culture that that thinks that we should have what we want on demand without a whole lot of struggle or a whole lot of discomfort. And it tempts us to think, this is what I want, this is about me, right now in this instant, it has to do with my happiness. And it affects us emotionally and it affects us spiritually making it so we have trouble thinking long term. We have trouble getting past the present crisis. Whatever that crisis might be, it might be a physical suffering, it might be some kind of a, an ailment, an illness, it might be a, a financial problem or, or some kind of relationship crisis, but whatever this, this current crisis is, I have trouble looking beyond that, beyond me and how this might affect my personal happiness now, and it turns me inward, only able to think of the short term and me, my happiness right now. And maybe that's why so many of us get so afraid and so pessimistic and so irritated and so irritable and so losing sight of what is most important. And it affects our faith in God as well. And that's why God comes to us like he does in his holy word today. And he gives us exactly what we need, like he always does. And that's to be able to think more long term and to be able to be in it for the long haul. And to that end, he gives us his word and his promises and his sons and his son. And, and maybe you didn't catch it right away, but Daniel did. As, as Daniel, like many of us, was very experienced in crises. As a teenager already, he had been one of the first group to be dragged off as prisoners of war into the Babylonian captivity. As he was there, he suffered greatly. People persecuted him. People made fun of him. People didn't let him have certain positions and jobs. And he even was put on trial and convicted. And they had an execution all set up for him. It didn't work out too well in that, that den of starving lions. But... He was pressed down. And now after being there for 70 some years after his entire nation and way of life and culture had been absolutely destroyed, now, now finally, God was letting them go back to their homeland. Now Daniel wasn't among those who had the opportunity to go back for some reason. He didn't get to go, but he did get to hear about them heading back and, and starting to rebuild and, and laying that foundation for the, the temple. And it was exciting news, but there was also news of frustrations and apathy and greed and selfishness and all the other sins and lack of faith that made that building project come to a grinding halt. And all of this was weighing very, very, very heavily on Daniel's heart. But he gets Jesus. Yeah, that hand that pulls him up when he is so down, that's Jesus. That's, well, more accurately, that's the Son of God before he became Jesus. That angel or messenger. And in the Bible languages, those are, those are both the same word. That angel or messenger. And we have to go by context to see that this time it's that angel of the Lord. That special messenger. That special messenger that keeps on saying things only God can say. And doing things only God can do. As he's just told us, he's the one who 
who's got this archangel Michael, the most powerful of all the angels, and he's got his back. He's the one who protects him. And only God Almighty could do that. And so he comes and he explains these things to Daniel. To Daniel, so that Daniel can think even in longer terms than that 70 plus years he's already been depending on those promises of God and his word. He said to me, Daniel, you are a highly valued man. Understand the work, words I am speaking to you. Highly valued. Highly valued? Are you kidding? God can't, he's so holy, he can't value anything or anyone who's not absolutely pure and perfect and holy. But this was also a long-term thing. This was one of those plans of God, a really long-term plan. A plan he describes in Romans 4 as he justifies the ungodly. So that Daniel, this sinner, and us sinners could be considered as highly valued and precious by God anyway. He says he justifies the ungodly. And how he does that, he says, by transferring their guilt onto his one and only perfect son, and then that son's perfection onto us. As that, that divine messenger reveals this plan to Daniel, he gets an even more long-term approach, long-term view of everything, and, and so do we. But wait, there's, and I don't want to sound like one of those cheesy infomercials, but wait, there is more. How can there possibly be more than this, right? But he says, wait, there is more. There's more of God's promises. And there's more of, of this word that had given Daniel faith and Christian humility. And there was more of this special benefit, this privilege called prayer. In fact, we're told that that's why Jesus even came to Daniel in the first place, was as a result of that praying. But then wait, there's even more than that. The incredible clearance that we get to be able to see past that door that no human eye can see past. Authorized personnel only. And he tells us we're authorized. And we get to see beyond that door a peek behind the scenes into this whole other realm of how God operates and takes care of business and takes care of his people. This spiritual world. This spiritual realm. And in another way that our wise and powerful and loving and holy God takes care of us and lets us know about it. See, this God is a God who can do absolutely anything, but he tells us he's also a God who likes to use means or tools or instruments to do everything. For example, the means or instrument he used to give us faith and forgiveness and eternal life with him is his gospel good news in the word and in the sacraments. And the way he gets that, the means he uses to get that wonderful blessing to anyone else is the means called his people, his church, who proclaim those benefits to the rest of the world. And one of the means he gives us here, and I think he gives us all these means as, as kind of a, a visual aid for us. One of these audio visual aid tools that some of the kids in school, they need that to be able to grasp these concepts. Well, here to grasp these concepts God gives to us. A little more help, these, these visual aids. And one of them isn't so visual because they're invisible, but we get the idea as he uses this means to protect and guard and, and these creatures, these fantastic beings. That he tells us he's created to serve him constantly, but to serve him, as he says in, in Hebrews 1, to serve for the benefit of those who inherit salvation. Yeah, angels, and he's talking about them serving us. And just this idea of, of these, these angels and serving us helps to remind us again what is most important. Because we know, as God's word says, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual forces of evil. As much as we get kind of short-sighted and sidetracked by the physical things and the worldly problems and concerns and wor worries, he says the real important stuff is happening on a spiritual level, in the spiritual realm. And there in the spiritual realm, we've got these ringers. They're on our team. It's God's special forces. These angel armies constantly guarding, protecting, fighting for us. And again, their service helps us think long-term, really long-term. I mean, they're obviously in it for the long haul, right? They were starting already back fighting in the, 
in the days of Adam and Eve. Back with that first fight and the fall into sin and, and all the way through ancient history. And they show up here in Daniel. This is in the 500 B.C.s and they're still fighting on behalf of God and behalf of God's people. Places like Babylon and Persia. Beings like this captain of the forces, this, this Michael, the archangel who, yeah, it's the prince of God's forces. But here he says, he calls him your prince too. Always fighting for you. Always working for you and always victorious. Are you getting tired of winning yet? Well, don't. Because it keeps on going constantly. As Michael and the rest of these angel forces are constantly battling on and constantly winning in Persia. And then in Greece and then Rome and everywhere else in the world. And everywhere else in time. Keeping all of history his story as in God's story. And always winning and always winning for God's people and always and always proclaiming and celebrating that as they, they did in the skies over Bethlehem when that one and only Savior came in, the only one who could do this thing to take our place in living God's work, will perfectly for us and give up his life then as payment in full for all of us. But just like Jesus wasn't done yet because we're not all in heaven with him yet, these angels aren't done yet. These holy, powerful beings, none of them retired after the Persian Wars or the Greek campaign or any of those other things. All of them are in it for the long haul, and that means they're in it to keep us to the end for the long haul. And that is just so cool and amazing and wonderful, the way, the way God shows us how involved he is in our lives and how he uses all these things, even things that you and I hardly ever think of or hardly are ever aware of, but there they are, used in this this constant engagement protecting us in a spiritual level. And I know when people think about spiritual level, a lot of people think about, oh, ghosts and how they could scare us, or, or they might think of how um, certain loved ones have passed away, and maybe they can somehow help us out from the other side of the veil. But both those things are incorrect as far as what God's holy word tells us. But we have actually something better. Our loved ones who have passed away, they don't need to deal with our weaknesses and our foolishness and our sinfulness. Our loved ones gone before us, they don't have to be bothered from their restful state for our little problems and concerns here. We got something better than that. We have angels that never falter in their mission from God. Always a reminder to us. Always a reminder of two big things. One is, and I don't know because I've never seen it, but I'm assuming there's some kind of a standard operating procedure manual for angels. There must be, because I've never heard of one of them showing up in a scene without always saying the same thing. Fear not. Don't be afraid. Stop it. Stop being scared. Why is everybody so scared all the time? Well, sin. Sin that makes us unholy people uncomfortable in the presence of absolute holiness. So there's that. And then the consequences of sin, right? That's why there's constantly a battle all around us. But then the second big thing they show us constantly is that the victory is assured. That this Jesus, the Christ, the one who won the battle, the victory, the God who promised that and came through on that also promised. In fact, he swears by his own holy self to make absolutely everything, the things you think are good and the things you think are bad, to work for your eventual best. We can't lose. We can only win. We can only win and rejoice, right, with these angels who are constantly, every time they give a picture of heaven, they're singing and praising God. And a lot of times we look through Revelation, they're singing a lot of, a lot of the same songs we're singing. And they're excited about the same things we're excited about as we're told that every one of them celebrates when that lost son or daughter comes back, is returned to the prodigal father. And there's great celebration there. Yeah, there's struggles and yeah, there's distress and yeah, there's problem. But look what we have. We have this best of all armies, the, the special forces of God Almighty constantly working for us constantly dedicated to the long-term goal. Like that Swedish Navy, right? Being able to see things in the, in the long term and wanting to be prepared for that. But better than the Swedish Navy because their answer lasted more than 150 years. In fact, more than 150 centuries from that first battle ever after the first fall into sin. 
all the way to the time of Daniel when they were able to resist those evil forces and it's proven because God then did get his people sent back from captivity to that just right place in the just right time for his promised savior to be born and redeem all of mankind. And no, on and on, even after that, none of the evil forces able to stand up to God's plans. And, and this one that we keep praying, thy will be done and deliver us from evil, he keeps on doing it. Every time, no matter how much evil, no matter how menacing and how harmful and how threatening it is around us, just like lined up dominoes falling over one after another, exposing the power and the wisdom and the love of our God who works everything for our best. All the way, yeah, long term, right? All the way to the end of time. And then guess what? Who's there? Those angels are still there. As they see the resurrection from the dead, that perfect reunion, that perfect reward in all of eternity. And we get to enjoy that and celebrate with the angels forever that incredible peace and joy that never end shining like the brightness of the sky, shining like the stars in the heavens, and rejoicing, us and the angels singing together. Look forward to that, look up. Jesus won, we can't lose. Think long, that's thinking right, amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus our Lord, amen. Having listened to the word of our holy God, we now have the opportunity to declare the faith he has given us we do that this morning using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Would you please stand? <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated.
hearts to the Lord and join in the responsive prayer of the church. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, how great is your love to us in Christ Jesus. For the sake of his sacrifice on the cross, you have forgiven all our sins and assured us that we are your dearly loved children now and forever. Because we are heirs of salvation, you have sent your holy angels to serve us. When we feel weak and helpless, Comfort us with the knowledge that your powerful angels surround us. When we are concerned about the welfare of our children and our fellow believers, remind us of your promise that guardian angels are also there to watch over them. On various occasions, you sent your archangel Michael to accomplish your purposes. As Michael once fought against the devil and his angels in heaven, Assure us that your angels are still overcoming the powers of evil around us in the world. As you sent Michael to carry out your will for the nations of the ancient world, comfort us with the knowledge that your holy angels are still guarding and protecting your institutions of government and family. As you once sent Michael to protect the body of your servant Moses, help us realize that whether we live or die, your angels continue to watch over us, and at last will carry our souls to heaven to be with you. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. As the angels praise your name continuously, so move us to offer you our constant thanks and praise for all you have done and continue to do for us. Hear us for the sake of Jesus our Savior. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all that we do, direct us to what is right in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.
much spit. I pray, God, to do something about that spit because I don't want these spit bubbles flowing around and distracting people. And he has a very good sense of humor. I'm, I'm sure that's why. So be careful what you pray for. No, I'm praying for everything. You've got to give you what's best anyways. Um, uh, I could use help again in the office uh, from maybe 1, 1 ish till 5-ish tomorrow. Uh, it might not be if, if they... Call off work early or don't come in tomorrow, you won't have to, but we still have the work going on in the kitchen. So if there's anyone who could fill in for me so I can get a couple of the, the shut-in visits, some of those are meant to be done during certain daylight hours. And so it would be very helpful if someone could sit in there for a little bit. Also, that LWS calendars, we're ready to send in the order for that. They're like $10 each. If we get 10 of them, I think the shipping limits would be like eleven fifty. but I'll see the council pay for shipping. So if you want one of these LWS prayer calendars, let me know so we have an idea how many to order. You got anything? No. Then we just have the Wells connection, five and a half minutes, seven three hours to leave. evangelism 
seminary training work with the Hmong people in Vietnam. Delegates also learned about new home mission efforts that have developed in the past two years, and future opportunities now in the works. Around the world, God's church continues to grow, um, and there's a lot of work that we can do toward that here in the United States. The convention was held on the Martin Luther College campus, giving delegates a first-hand opportunity to see the needs which are being addressed in the school's new synod-wide campaign called Equipping Christian Witnesses. The recruitment, tuition assistance, and facilities pillars of the campaign are vital because the young people on this campus will be leading our church for the generations to come. Once again, this convention was a reminder of the many ways in which God is blessing our synod. I also want to thank you for giving me the privilege of serving another term as your synod president. As you've done in the past, I know that you'll keep me and our entire synod in your prayers. For more details on all of the events of the convention, as well as the gospel ministries you support with your congregation mission offerings, visit the Synod Convention website at wells.net forward slash 2019 Synod Convention.